All right, what it is, what it is. This is TK's Two Cents. Welcome to the day. Going through two tweets from the week, and uh, we're going to take you beyond 140 characters to talk about it a little bit. Um, I'm always going to drop it while it's hot. I'm never going beyond 15 minutes, and, and I'm, I'm going to try to get it under 10. But anyway, let's waste no time. Let's dive right in. Let's look at the first tweet. I believe in the power of difficult discussions. Um, all right. Um, in every age, there are people who say it's not worth it because everyone gets mad and no one listens. But there is always someone listening and learning, even if they aren't the ones who are laughing and leaving. All right. You know, uh, one of the things I love to do when I'm when I'm learning about a, a new topic is I love to watch debates because there's something really interesting about seeing how a person's ideas measure up when you've got somebody else playing that role of devil's advocate and just throwing a bunch of objections at them. You know, we can watch a TED talk or you can you can watch somebody on a podcast and everybody sounds so confident. Everybody sounds so well spoken. Everybody sounds so smart. But then the next guest comes on the same podcast or they do a TED talk and they contradict what that other person said. And then you can always see people in the YouTube comments being like, that's just not true. That person doesn't know what they're talking about. And I'm always curious to know what would it be like if you could get that same person in the room with somebody that's talking smack about their ideas and we can somehow get a conversation going that's cordial and respectful and we can see what people's ideas are made of when, when, when they're going up against some kind of challenge. So I love debates for that reason. But I have a lot of friends who say things like, ah, debates don't really achieve anything. Uh, debates are really a waste of time. You, you know, um, people are just gonna leave with the same beliefs that they had coming into the debate. Uh, you know, one of my colleagues, Carrie McDonald from Fee, she just had a debate yesterday about homeschooling and she absolutely crushed it. So shout out to Carrie for just that excellent job uh, against the Harvard, Harvard professor. But, but it leaves you wondering, is anybody really gonna change? Is this just, you know, all for naught? Well, I watched this debate yesterday that really gave me a lot of hope for, for humanity and, and the potential of having difficult discussions that it would just be easier to ignore. So there was a debate between John McWhorter and uh, Ta-Nehisi Coates. And the two of these people are very prolific writers and they write a lot about issues pertaining to race and culture. And they could not be more opposite in some of their beliefs about the role that race relations does and should play in, in the success of black people. And both of these guys are black. And, and they, they got together to have this debate that lasted for roughly an hour. And they disagreed about all the things you'd expect them to disagree about. But there was this really interesting moment at the end. At the end of the debate, uh, Professor McWhorter says, Ta-Nehisi, I've, I've been wanting to ask you about something. He says, you wrote some words about me in, in your piece. And you, you basically said that you, would, that you wouldn't want to expose your son to a single sentence that I've ever written. And it was a very like harsh sounding statement. And he said, you know, what is it that I have said? What is it that I have done that would make you say something so strong that you would wanna protect your son from reading my words. And Tana Hesse Coates said, you know, that was just a really unkind thing to say. Sometimes when we write, we write from emotion. I was really emotional when I wrote that. And I, I don't mean that. And Professor McWhorter said, well, wow, that wasn't the response I was expecting to hear from you. But you know, basically I appreciate it. And, and it was so amazing to me because I watched this hour long debate where these two disagreed about almost everything. And then you get to that one last minute of the debate. And in that last minute of the debate, you see something that is so powerful, that is so amazing. It's like mining for gold. It's an exceptionally rare moment, but oh, when you have one, it makes you say, yeah, this is what it's all about right here. You saw two guys with really big brands really big followings, a lot of influence on completely opposite ends of the spectrum, have a moment of civility and cordiality and humanity. And, and I think when it comes to debates and difficult discussions, this is where the real value is. And this is what I tried to capture in that tweet. 
it's not so much about changing the minds of the people that you disagree with. It's about the opportunity to model something very valuable for all of the people that are watching. It's easy to focus on the people that are laughing at you, the people that are trolling you, the people that are saying, I don't care about this discussion, but there is always someone in the background that's taking lessons, just like I took a lesson from their debate when you're having a difficult discussion. Um, one of those lessons is when you deal with someone firmly and assertively by standing up for your ideas and yourself, there are other people who might believe the same things or even different things. And they're watching and they're saying, oh, wow, I just got some ideas for how I can be more assertive in my own life. I've had a number of people send me messages saying things like, the way that you dealt with that rude person online gave me an idea for how I can do a better job at standing up for myself. I'm usually a pushover, but when I saw you be firm with them, it actually inspired me to be more tough in my own life. But the second thing is also dealing with people compassionately. There are times where I've dealt with people online very charitably and not had people say, you know, I would have got upset at that person. I would have blocked that person. But seeing the way you handle them gave me a new idea for how I can talk to people. So difficult discussions are not just for the people you're having them with. They're also for the people who are watching. And if you can find a way to model for people how to have a respectable, intelligent, charitable discussion, you can do a lot of good, even if you don't change anybody's minds in the immediate present. Let's go to tweet number two, because now I'm going to contradict myself. Now I'm going to say something that sounds like it's the exact opposite. I believe in the value of difficult discussions, but I also believe in the existence of difficult discussions that are a complete waste of time. Just as you need to use critical thinking during a discussion, you also need to use critical thinking before a discussion. I can sum up this whole tweet with a single sentence. Don't be naive. Don't be naive, okay? There are some real good people in this world. I have a lot of faith in humanity, but there are some bad actors in this world. There are people who will not hesitate to use you, to manipulate you, to deliberately drain your energy, your time, deliberately waste your money or exploit you for personal gain. TK, don't be so negative. If you know me, you know that negative and pessimistic is the last thing to be used to describe my attitude. But I'm telling you now, you don't have to be negative and pessimistic in order to acknowledge the existence of people out there who will gamify your attention. I'll give you a couple examples of how this is happening right now. First of all, online bots are real. There is significant investment being placed in AI bots that know how to identify certain words, certain like trigger topics, and then just argue with people who post on those topics. I used to say the best reason for not arguing online is because you're not going to change anybody. But now I'll say one of the best reasons for not arguing too quickly online is because you might not even be arguing with a real person. Bots are real. And you got to be careful about that. The second thing is it is extremely valuable to people when they get your attention on, on an article or on a tweet. Um, I think I think the author's name is Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. In a book called Flow, The Psychology of Optimal Performance, he says that attention is psychic energy. And there are people that feed on the psychic energy that is your attention. And so one of the things you see happening on social media a lot, people get mad at something that somebody said, and then they'll retweet it and be like, this person's an idiot. Or they'll argue with that person and be like, you're so stupid for saying that. And that person doesn't care. They are gamifying your attention. When you retweet them out of hate, that's no different from retweeting them out of love. When you comment on their post to argue with them, they love it, even though they don't even take you seriously because with the ad revenue model, attention is attention. And there are people that say things in a way that's specifically designed to trigger you because they just wanna feed off the energy that is your attention. And so as much as you can learn from having difficult discussions, it's also important to have a BS filter. Uh, there's a book called uh, The Last Lecture. I think his name is Randy Posh. He talks about how one of the most important things in life is to know when you are in the middle of a pissing match. Because when you are, get out of there as fast as possible. Everybody that's debating you is not trying to learn from you. They're not trying to interpret you charitably. They're not, they're not trying to have a positive experience. They're just trying to either embarrass you or manipulate you in some kind of way, and you gotta be careful. So here are a few things that you can do 
to avoid having your time wasted in discussions. The first question you should ask is, what is the point of this conversation? You know, a lot of people think about their arguments when they're in the middle of a discussion, like what's the point that I'm trying to prove in the middle of this argument? But you gotta ask yourself, what is the point of the argument itself? You ever been in a fight with somebody and then you get to a point where you're like, wait, what are we even arguing about? That's what arguments can easily be like. They're just kind of like, most arguments are just battles for energy. Two people are just battling each other for energy. And so it's, just, it's just some kind of power play. But you gotta ask yourself, what is the purpose of this? And if there's no good answer to that question, don't waste your time. Second question you gotta ask yourself, do I have something better to do? Do I have some other responsibility I should be meeting? Because you don't have all the time in the world and people who wanna debate you, they're ready to go right now and they wanna argue with you all the time, but that doesn't mean it's the best decision for you. There's a quote that says, you don't have to say, you don't have to accept every invitation to an argument that's given to you or you don't have to attend every argument that you're invited to. The third thing to ask is, is this the best context for having an argument? You know, I remember I was going back and forth for like three days with somebody, some, some kind of debate. We spent like three days debating. And at one point I just said, hey, you know what? We're going back and forth. We're missing each other. How about we get on a Zoom call? We can talk for about like 45 minutes. We can even record it if you want so you can share it with people and, and, and we can just get to the bottom of it. And immediately that person was like, oh, no, that's okay. It's all right. I don't want the call. And, and the argument completely stopped. And, and what I realized in that moment is simply by raising the cost of a debate with me, by asking that person to have some skin in the game for having a conversation with me, it was no longer worth it. They only wanted to have a conversation when it was in front of an audience and where they could have the luxury of going back and forth on Twitter. As soon as I made it personal, they didn't want it anymore. So it's important sometimes to make sure that even when you do debate, that you choose to have that debate in a context that's actually conducive to personal, respectful conversation. Um, otherwise, get on with your life. You know, pick and choose your difficult discussions wisely because your time can be wasted. You want to learn, but not at the expense of your own well-being. Peace out. That's a wrap.